Dinosaurs were some of the most successful groups of animals ever to walk the earth, evolving in a world very different from the one we live in today. In the latest installment of the Jurassic Park franchise, Jurassic World Dominion, the dinosaurs are forced to adapt to a world that is seemingly no longer made for them, being showcased in all sorts of environments, from jungles to forests, even the city streets of Malta. However, the film showcases these long-extinct reptiles in the last place people would expect, in the lands of ice and snow. To the surprise of many, dinosaurs living in snow is something more than the ideas of fiction. In fact, it's been fairly well known since the late 20th century. As a result, it's raised a big question for many people. How do dinosaurs live in snow? Dinosaurs lived in all sorts of environments, and populated the world in various different lineages and forms, adapting to all sorts of wild and untamed ecosystems. However, dinosaurs are also reptiles, and often this group of scaly critters doesn't handle well with frigid climates. So if dinosaurs are reptiles, how do they manage to withstand the cold, let alone the snow? To understand how dinosaurs could adapt to these varying climates, we need to understand how these animals manage their body temperature. And to do that, we'll need to examine their metabolism. An animal's metabolism is the set of chemical reactions that allows an animal to be self-sustaining. And each group is different. Mammals, for example, are endothermic, or warm-blooded as it's commonly called. And reptiles are infamous for being cold-blooded, or ectothermic because they have to rely on external forces such as the sun to regulate their body temperature. So you'd think dinosaurs would be ectothermic because they're reptiles, right? Well, it's not that simple. In fact, it's far more interesting. So how does one figure out the metabolism of animals that have been extinct for millions of years? Well, many ways actually. A big clue is the presence of feathers. Feathers are structures that evolved for various purposes, such as display, disguise, and most famously, flight. But above all, feathers are key in regulating body temperature. From keeping birds warm by insulating their bodies, to keeping them cool by releasing excess heat. And to make matters more interesting, dinosaurs also had feathers. Dozens of dinosaur specimens preserved fossilized feathers, all of them coming in all sorts of shapes and sizes, as well as being found in many different groups, the most renowned of which being the theropod dinosaurs, the classic three-toed, two-legged dinosaurs that everyone thinks of. From raptors, to oviraptors, to therizinosaurs, to even tyrannosaurs. We even know to what extent the feathers covered these animals. Most of the time, they were completely covered. Even the most famous ones like Velociraptor, which we know thanks to its close relatives having these coverings. These feathers weren't limited to the small animals either, with Deuteranus being the largest confirmed feathered animal currently recorded, growing up to lengths of 30 feet or 9 meters for those who use metrics. I say confirmed because Dinochirus might have had feathers, and it was nearly 40 feet or 12 meters. However, Dinochirus doesn't have direct evidence of feathers, unlike Euteranus, which had a preserved coat. Regardless, feathers were fairly basal in dinosaurs, or an ancestral trait in layman terms, with the presence of feathers or filament-like structures being found as far back as their common ancestors. This is even more evident with their close cousins, pterosaurs, who have their own filament coverings called pycnofibers, which in fact help give pterosaurs a warm-blooded metabolism that allow them to become active flyers. Both dinosaurs and pterosaurs share a common ancestor, and that common ancestor had those filaments that eventually carried over when the two groups branched off and eventually, feathers themselves were inherited by birds. The feathers of dinosaurs, like birds, varied, from very pinaceous, while others were downy. These structures likely evolved in dinosaurs for insulation, helping the animals regulate their body temperature in different environments, from keeping Velociraptor warm in the cold desert nights, to insulating Euteranus in the frigid snow. 
Feathers are also a potential reason why dinosaurs became so successful during the Mesozoic. By having the means to maintain a high body temperature and regulate it, allowed them to navigate to different environments, as well as foster complex brains, with endothermy allowing them to maintain a metabolism that can foster the energy for complex behaviors. Another way we can look at the metabolism of dinosaurs is the lifestyles these animals lived in while they roamed the earth. And needless to say, dinosaurs were very different from most modern reptiles. Dinosaurs lived fairly active lifestyles, based on fossil evidence such as trackways, preserved growth rates, and mass burials, showcasing these animals migrating, hunting, herding, and other natural rituals such as mating. And as a result, likely required higher metabolisms than most modern reptiles to maintain said lifestyles as land animals. A more active lifestyle typically requires a much higher metabolism in order to maintain calories for animals to keep going. This is even indicative in modern reptiles like monitor lizards, which actually maintain high body temperatures in order to be active hunters, and have the closest version of endothermy cold-blooded animals could have. However, an animal's metabolism is affected by several factors, their lifestyle, their adaptations, their environment, etc. And endothermy might not have been the only way dinosaurs might have regulated their body temperature, with some large dinosaurs potentially possessing what is known as gigantothermy. Gigantothermy is the phenomenon where an animal's large size allows them to retain more body heat, thanks to the lack of surface area. Modern leatherback sea turtles and even large crocodiles possess their own version of gigantothermy, growing so large and bulky that their size helps them retain and trap body heat. And it's distinctly possible dinosaurs could have possessed this similar metabolism. After all, not all dinosaurs were covered in feathers, like duckbills and sauropods. The final nail in the coffin for dinosaur metabolism, however, lies in a group of living animals, a group of dinosaurs that have survived since the Jurassic. Birds. Birds are in fact dinosaurs, evolving from animals like Archaeopteryx. And thanks to modern birds, we've gained a key understanding of dinosaur anatomy. Thanks to avian dinosaurs, birds, sharing various anatomical traits with non-avian dinosaurs. Since birds belong to the group Dinosauria, this not only makes birds dinosaurs, but the only group of warm-blooded reptiles left today. As a result, it can be strongly inferred that like birds, dinosaurs were likely warm-blooded. At least in most cases. Because dinosaurs were warm-blooded, it allowed them to live in a wide range of environments. But what types of environments did dinosaurs live in? Contrary to popular belief, dinosaurs weren't just living in swamps but a whole set of ecosystems, from lush fern plains to scorching deserts, all the way to tropical islands, and of course, even the freezing cold. We can determine the environments these animals lived in based on the sediments they were found in. Paleontology isn't just looking at old bones, it's very much a geology field as much as it is biology, if not more so. Paleontologists often have to be aware of what rocks dinosaurs are buried in, as well as using various studies and tests on said rocks, from looking at stratigraphy, to radiometric dating, to even performing chemical tests on rocks and sediments, to help establish what environmental conditions from billions of years ago that led to the rock formations we see today. We can also look to other environmental aspects that could provide clues on what environments these animals lived in from the types of plants that we find preserved in fossils, to the shells of mollusks and skeletons of fish that helps us determine whether there was water at some point. From these various studies, we have found that the snowy environments in the Mesozoic weren't just present, but were fairly common in the time of the dinosaurs, particularly the Cretaceous. From the Yixian Formation in China, to the Nemec Formations of Mongolia, to as far south as Victoria, Australia in Dinosaur Cove, and as far north as Alaska with Prince Creek. The Prince Creek Formation in particular 
has been the spotlight of paleo-environmental studies in recent years. Because of its location so close to the North Pole, the host of dinosaurs having been found there, from the thick-nosed Pachyrhinosaurus, to the T-Rex of the North called Nanoxaurus, to a plucky, big-brained dinosaur called Troodon. Often, Prince Creek is depicted as a place that, like today, would have seen snow. However, this subject isn't black and white, as it was found in a recent study that Prince Creek wasn't an icy tundra as it's popularly depicted, but more so saw seasonal changes in weather, being as warm as the US state of Georgia during the spring and summer, to seeing light snowfall without the formation of ice in the freezing cold of winter, when the land didn't see sun for months. And more remarkably, dinosaurs didn't just survive here, they positively thrived, with a study published in June 2021 regarding the dinosaurs of Prince Creek having high numbers of juvenile animals, babies that couldn't make long journeys, indicating that these animals weren't migrating to Prince Creek but living there year-round. Even during the 120 days, the North Pole wouldn't see any sun, causing temperatures to drop dramatically. And because dinosaurs were generally active animals, they had to adapt to stay warm until the sun returned in the spring, be it through feathers, sheer bulk, hibernation, or a combination of these adaptations. Not only to keep themselves warm, but their families as well. This in turn not only serves as an example of these animals living in extreme temperatures, but further evidence for non-avian dinosaurs being warm-blooded. It's places like Prince Creek that allow us to understand that dinosaurs were far more complex than we could have ever imagined, showing us that even in the most extreme environmental conditions, dinosaurs found a way to make it their own. From the evolution of feathers, to their ability to adapt to nearly any environment, dinosaurs managed to find a way to inhabit nearly every ecosystem and environment available to them. Even the extreme cold of the North Pole. In the immortal words of Jurassic Park, life found a way. <laughs>